A lot of people are talking about this American boxing journalist, and I use the word journalist in inverted commas here, who wrote this article in which he claimed that Deontay Wilder single-handedly revived the heavyweight division. Now, if that guy isn't on the Al Heyman payroll, then he must be on crystal meth instead, because that's the only way I can explain somebody coming out with such an outrageous lie as that. The Klitschko brothers dominated the heavyweight division for roughly a decade. And although they were both great fighters, they weren't particularly exciting, either inside or outside the ring. And other than in Germany and the Ukraine, they really weren't very popular with the public. And it's not just because they weren't British or American, because if you look at the history of boxing in Britain, there have been multiple heavyweight champions over the decades who were not British, but were very popular in Britain. People like Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson spring to mind. The reason that the Klitschko's weren't very popular in the boxing world as a whole is more to do with their styles. They had this robotic style in the ring, and particularly with Vladimir, he had this jab-jab-grab routine that he would go through. And they were also robotic outside the ring in terms of their personality. So they just turned a lot of fans off and they even turned networks off because HBO and Showtime stopped showing Klitschko fights after a while. I think it was after the Vladimir Klitschko Sultan Abramov fight. They stopped showing Klitschko fights after that because that fight was such a stinker. So was Deontay Wilder the one who came along and ended the Klitschko reign of dominance? You know, I referred to the Klitschko era as the dark ages of heavyweight boxing. Was Deontay Wilder the one to come along and end the Klitschko reign and lift the heavyweight division out of the Dark Ages? No, he wasn't. In 32 fights as a contender, Deontay Wilder never went anywhere near the Klitschkos. He could have done, but he chose not to. Instead, what he did is he waited for Vitaly Klitschko to retire. The WBC belt then became vacant. Chris Ariola fought Berman Stavern for the vacant belt. Stavern won, and then Deontay Wilder challenged Berman Stavern because he saw it as an opportunity opportunity to take on a weak champion. Which is what he did. Vladimir was still champion at the time. He had more belts than Stavern. He could have fought Vladimir. He didn't want to do it. Fought Stavern instead because it was the easier option. After defeating Stavern, he could have unified with Vladimir. Didn't do that either. So Deontay Wilder certainly didn't revive the heavyweight division. He let Tyson Fury, who... In his 25th fight, remember, Deontay Wilder had 33 fights by this point. Tyson Fury was only in his 25th fight. He flew over to Germany and he fought Klitschko and he ended the Klitschko reign. He was the one who paved the way for the heavyweight division to be revived. Tyson Fury, not Deontay Wilder. Now, Fury didn't necessarily bring the fans back. He opened the division up again because he took down Vladimir Klitschko but he didn't necessarily bring the popularity back. Tyson Fury, either before he beat Klitschko or after he beat Klitschko, he wasn't a big ticket seller. He wasn't doing big pay-per-views or anything like that. Anthony Joshua was the one who brought the mass fan interest back. So it was a combination of Fury and AJ who revived the heavyweight division. AJ, unlike Fury, he was actually selling out arenas before he even fought for a world title. There was a massive buzz around AJ. He fought Dylan White for the British heavyweight title on pay-per-view as a headline at the O2 Arena, a sellout. He was selling out arenas for the British title when Deontay Wilder couldn't even sell out arenas as a world champion. AJ had only had like 15, 16 fights. Deontay Wilder had had over 30 fights. AJ was selling out arenas doing pay-per-views and Deontay Wilder wasn't. When AJ became world champion, and by the way, AJ owes Tyson Fury a debt of gratitude in terms of how soon he was able to become a world champion. Because look, Vladimir wasn't going to go on forever. If Tyson Fury didn't beat him, then somebody else would have beaten him down the line or Klitschko would have retired. The heavyweight division was going to open up, you know, in terms of opportunities eventually anyway. But Tyson Fury allowed it to be opened up sooner rather than later. And as a result of that, Anthony Joshua, who already had this buzz around him, even as British champion, he was then 
able to get the opportunity to fight for a world title, become a world champion, beat Klitschko, and that took his popularity absolutely through the roof. And AJ's popularity had a trickle-down effect for the rest of the division. So because AJ became so big and so popular and he was, he was selling out arenas, other heavyweights who were associated with AJ also started becoming more popular because of AJ's popularity. And Deontay Wilder is one of those fighters who became popular because of AJ's popularity, because he, of him being associated with Anthony Joshua. And again, I talk facts, people. I'm not here to spin propaganda or any of that nonsense that other channels do and fanboys do. I'm here to talk facts. If we go back to 2018, Deontay Wilder had been world champion for three years by this point. He fought Luis Ortiz that year and he earned $2.1 million. Anthony Joshua fought Alexander Povetkin that year and he earned 20 million pounds, which in dollars is $26 million. So Anthony Joshua was earning over 10 times as much as Deontay Wilder in 2018. So if Wilder was the one who revived the division, how come AJ was earning over 10 times more than him? How come AJ was selling out stadiums and Wilder was struggling to even sell out arenas? You know, the facts, the numbers, they don't lie. Anthony Joshua was way more popular than Wilder in 2018, selling way more tickets, breaking records on pay-per-view, earning way more money, because the buzz was brought back to the heavyweight division by AJ. It wasn't brought back by Wilder. Wilder's popularity only started to grow once he started calling AJ's name. He built his own popularity off the back of AJ's success. He rode AJ's coattails to get where he is now. Because again, in 2018, Wilder was earning 2 million a fight. Now he's earning 20 million a fight. Why? Because right after the Ortiz fight, the first one, he started mentioning AJ's name. It's not a coincidence, people. Is a direct correlation between where Wilder is now in terms of his purses and when he started mentioning AJ. That whole negotiation period where AJ was sending all these offers to Deontay Wilder and Wilder was turning him down. Team Wilder used that as an opportunity to push their propaganda and build Deontay Wilder's name up. So again, this narrative that they're trying to push, that Wilder, not, not that he is partly responsible for the revival of heavyweight boxing. No, they're saying that he single-handedly is responsible for the revival in heavyweight boxing. What brand of crack are these people smoking? They're ignoring all the facts. They're acting like Fury Klitschko never happened. They're acting like AJ Klitschko never happened. They're acting like AJ wasn't selling out stadiums, wasn't doing over 1.5 million on pay-per-view. I mean, AJ was so popular in the UK and becoming popular worldwide, that he started attracting the interest of the American networks. The American networks who hadn't been interested in heavyweight boxing for so long, they were interested in AJ. They all wanted a piece of AJ after they saw that Klitschko fight at Wembley. This is facts. Because it was such a monumental event, because there was such a buzz around Anthony Joshua. He wasn't around Wilder. <laughs> but as I say, these Deontay Wilder propaganda merchants, like the individual who wrote that article, they have got absolute, utter contempt for the truth. I was going to say a reckless disregard for the truth, but it's not reckless disregard. It's a willful disregard. They've got sheer contempt for the truth. They're not interested in the truth. They're interested in peddling lies that perpetuate their agenda. That's all they're interested in. I mean, that guy must have been laughing as he sat down and typed that article because he knew what, what he was writing was such utter rubbish. It was literally the opposite of the truth. Deontay Wilder got popular off the back of AJ's success and Tyson Fury's win over Klitschko. That's how Wilder got popular. And, and even then, he also owes a debt of gratitude to Tyson Fury um, for his first fight against Fury. Because it was really Fury who sold that, more so than Wilder. So, I don't know. These people don't live in reality. Whereas I do, these people don't have any respect or regard for the truth, whereas I do. 
So I guess we're just different like that. So while they continue to peddle propaganda and lies, I'll continue to respect the truth. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's happening. I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.